Now, can somebody speak, please? Uh, can you hear me? Okay, hold on. My my computer was moved, <laughs> and Justin. I. Hello, Mayor. Can you hear? <laughs> no. Todd, do you have any opening words you you would care to add for staff? Uh, none at this time, Randy. Uh, I'm gonna let me see if I can get a hold of Clay real quick and get somebody over to help Dan. Okay. okay, I don't have any sound. Well, no. Let me see if I can. I I am gonna go try and get a headset. Hold on. Okay. Um, do we have enough time to give the mayor a minute before we proceed? Okay. Let's do it then. Give it another minute or two. Well, it, it, I think it, 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 I would cue Muzak if I could. It's the mayor's office. I find it. Please hold. Just sing, Randy. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if you want that. Doesn't Public Works have a theme song? I'd like to see Todd try it. You know, let's see what unhid what hidden talents we haven't discovered. I can assure you, it's not there. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll use the speakers for now, and we'll get. Maybe we can have IT testing. Can you hear us with this with the headset on? Yes, sir, I can. So right. let's get yeah. going, and we'll work on the speakers later. All right. Uh, if uh, uh, you would like me to proceed, please. Very good. Good afternoon, uh, uh, Mayor and members of City Council. Uh, here today to uh, uh, give you a briefing on the city's act active transportation plan, and uh, our staff members. Uh, Audrey Nickerson and Basam al uh may be joining us uh, during the course of this study session. Uh, they're not expecting to uh, present, uh, but they will be available for questions a little later on. Uh, Audrey is presently uh, out of the President's Plaza uh, uh, working with some of our business customers. So um, today, I wanted to go through uh, a, a briefing to City Council on the City of Palm Desert Active Transportation Program, or what we abbreviate as ATP. Uh, we're gonna be talking about uh, the proposed uh, five-year uh, ATP capital improvement program. Uh, you'll be giving uh, a glimpse of it, actually a, a deeper glimpse of it uh, today in advance of the budget sessions coming up. Uh, we also wanna talk about uh, grant funding opportunities, uh, what we're aware of, what we're looking at. Uh, also policy change, uh, policy change that's supporting or, or even driving aspects of active transportation. And I thought I'd close the, today's presentation with some before and after slides uh, showing uh, city's recent investments in, in active transportation. So I think we should start off with what is active transportation. Really, it, it, it addresses uh, uh, walking, uh, bicycles, uh, and Palm Desert has a robust golf cart uh, program. So I'm including that in, in active transportation. Certainly accessibility. Uh, to our public infrastructure. And dialed into that is, of course, transit, uh, connecting uh, cyclists and walkers uh, to uh, sunlight. Uh, also, roadway safety, making our roadways safe for all users, uh, particularly our most vulnerable, our walkers uh, and, our, and our cyclists, as well as uh, uh, making our roadway infrastructure safe for school children. Uh, we have about uh, 7,800 kids attending uh, nine schools in the greater Palm Desert area uh, in uh, K through 12, both public and, and private. Uh, we sent you uh, in your packet uh, a little primer on uh, the types of bikeways uh, that are in Palm Desert and really are, are the typical classifications, types of bikeways that you see uh, throughout the country. Uh, and we'll be referring to these classifications throughout our presentation today. Uh, and just uh, in summary, uh, class one are multi-use path or shared use paths. Uh, and an example is the section of CV Link uh, along Monterey Avenue, the east side of Monterey between uh, Parkview Drive and Magnesia Falls Drive. 
uh, buffered bike lanes uh, or class two. It's a flavor of class two. Uh, a good example is San Pablo Avenue, south of Fred Waring Drive. That's the first confirming. phase of San Pablo Avenue. Uh, then uh, conventional uh, class put these bike up. lanes that are unbuffered. Oh, uh, we have those throughout the city. Uh, and uh, an example would be Portola Avenue, north of Country Club Drive. And then shared roadways. Uh, that's uh, uh, a roadway that you don't have a bike lane or it's not a separated path, but it's really uh, a roadway that encourages all users, all, all wheeled road users of the roadway to share the roadway. And you typically sign these with uh, a, a, a sign that says share the road, or in this case, this example says bike boulevard. Uh, and then also you have pavement markings, which we call sharrows, S-H-A-R-R-O-W-S, uh, uh, sharrows that, it, that help reinforce to drivers and cyclists alike to, to share the road. An example is uh, San Pablo Avenue uh, uh, north of uh, Highway 111 uh, through the roundabout at San Gargonia. We have these sharrows on the roadway there. Um, then moving up to uh, class four, uh, uh, we have uh, really two flavors of class four. We have a two-way cycle track. Uh, that is really what CV Link is. Uh, and I'll use the example on Magnesia Falls Drive, but certainly it exists on Parkview Drive and also Painter's Path. And then lastly is a one-way class four cycle track. Uh, and a good example of that would be San Pablo Avenue phase two project. So our ATP program uh, consists of many facets. Uh, and I'd like to take a deeper dive into uh, Palm Desert's approach to active transportation. Uh, as you know, a focus of the city over the past few years has been completing the implementation of several key projects, including San Pablo Avenue and CV Link. And while these significant projects have been implemented, uh, the city has initiated two major uh, new programs, including PD Link and Walk and Roll PD. Uh, we've also conducted major studies of the city's transportation network uh, for safety and capacity issues and we continue to maintain active transportation infrastructure. The scope of the PD Link program is the extension of bikeways from neighborhoods, institutions, schools, and shopping to the CV Link. And the yeah. scope of the Walk and Roll PD program is identifying gaps or deficiencies in the existing bikeway and pedestrian networks along arterials and collectors citywide and filling in those gaps or, or improving and addressing those existing uh, deficiencies. Uh, the city previously studied uh, deficiencies in our accessibility, both in our facilities as, long, as well as uh, along our roadways uh, in 2019. And we are using that inventory of known deficiencies to inform the scopes of our projects. So when we repave a roadway, when we improve a building, when we do maintenance on a building, we take care of those uh, deficiencies for accessibility. Uh, the city council accepted last year uh, a local roadway safety plan, uh, and that plan serves as a guide for safety-centric improvements for the near future. Last year, uh, the city also initiated a study of capacity and operational needs of intersections throughout the, the community. Both of these studies uh, include recommendations for improvements, and are informing our various programs and we're coordinating all of these informational sources uh, into the scopes of our projects as we develop them. The city's active transportation is also enhanced and increased through land development and, and even annual maintenance activities. For instance, land development activities that require modification to the city's roadways pose an opportunity to update or upgrade existing bikeways and expand and extend public sidewalks. Uh, the city's uh, leveraging our annual pavement maintenance program to upgrade bikeway pavement markings. Case in point, uh, last year we, we, we slurry sealed Portola Avenue and we upgraded the bikeway markings, uh, the bike lane markings along Portola as a part of the slurry program. The city continues to support existing maintenance programs such as our annual sidewalk and curb wrap replacements. And of course, keeping our roadways clean through our street sweeping program. Uh, the city in recent years has pursued grant funding for active transportation. We received 3.222 million for San Pablo Avenue phase two. And we just uh, completed uh, the citywide bike golf cart improvements project. And that was an $85,000 grant 
uh, from RCTC through uh, the SB 821 program. And also the local road safety plan that uh, you accepted last year, uh, that plan uh, cost $80,000 and $72,000 of that uh, was grant funded uh, by the state. And that local road safety plan has borne substantial fruit in that we uh, uh, applied for highway safety improvement program funds last year and received an award of $2.2 million to improve roadway safety for roadway users, including motorists, but also pedestrians and, and bicycles. Uh, we are working on grant applications for the next round of Highway Safety Improvement Program funds. Uh, those are due in, uh, in, in September. And also uh, Active Transportation Program funds, funding applications, they're due in just about uh, 45 days in the middle of June. And we are working on applications for both of those programs to augment the city's um, uh, funding in the, in the capital improvement program. The city is using the new community engagement platform, Engage Palm Desert, uh, for our projects, in addition to holding community meetings and engaging with stakeholder groups. Through the PD Link and Walk and Roll PD programs, staff have developed a listing of stakeholders that we can engage for feedback on a variety of ATP-related issues. The city has branded our two main ATP programs as Walk and Roll PD and PD Link. We have logos. Branding is important for recognition, uh, both during planning, design, and even construction. We'll be using the PD Link logo uh, on signs to help build an, a system of wayfinding signs as we build out uh, PD Link. Also want to talk about uh, uh, some policy updates. Uh, last year, the state adopted two bills, AB 43 and AB 773, that impact how we look at speed limits and closing streets. These can impact uh, how we advance our active transportation program. And these laws also factor into our toolbox to be developed with the neighborhood traffic management plan uh, effort that is presently being kicked off. Public meetings uh, will be held the week of May 9th, May 9th in uh, three sectors of the city. Uh, in today's uh, admin weekly update, we, are, we sent to uh, Todd's office for distribution tomorrow. Uh, we give uh, city council and staff an update on where we are with those, with those meetings. Also mentioned the CVAG adopted earlier this year a set of recommended guidelines uh, for active transportation design. And in the near future, staff will be seeking direction from city council on formally adopting uh, those design guidelines. Uh, and lastly, uh, the, the draft five-year CIP uh, that we have been crafting for city council review uh, represents a phased implementation of the walk and roll PD and PD link programs, uh, as well as other aspects of active transportation, including our maintenance activities, the neighborhood traffic management planning, uh, and we uh, are, are structuring our five-year CIP, CIP around act, uh, uh, achievable uh, uh, goals for bikeway and sidewalk construction. I think it's important to remind ourselves that the, the genesis of, of uh, the foundation for active transportation uh, activities in Palm Desert stems from our, our general plan. Uh, and one of the primary goals of the general plan is providing alternative ways of getting around, including walking, bicycling, and golf carts. The, on the right-hand side of your screen is the general plan's map for the different bike and golf cart routes uh, that the city envisioned with this update to the general plan uh, uh, six years ago now. And then in the center of the screen is an example of a roadway typology that shows uh, the inclusion of active transportation along a typical kind of a roadway. Uh, the general plan uh, envisions an interconnected multimodal transportation system offering, offering diverse options for automobiles, transit, golf carts, biking, and, and walking. And these future transportation facilities are described, well described in the, in the general plan. Uh, this system also provides a, a larger framework of statutory requirements, uh, working with state and regional agencies and adjacent cities whose roadways, bike trails, and sidewalks uh, connect to Palm Desert. So we actively engage uh, our neighbors uh, and CVAG on what we're doing 
with respect to active transportation in Palm Desert. The, the general plan describes policies and approaches uh, to provide the city with flexibility to interact uh, with these constraints in a way that addresses the needs of residents, employees, and visitors. And such ideas include, include livable streets, uh, which is a balanced approach to transportation that accommodates all modes of, of travel uh, safely and efficiency. Uh, everything from parking to pedestrian facilities to bikeway networks to integrating uh, our roadway network with uh, the needs of sunlight uh, and a sustainable transportation network that can be built, operated, and maintained within the city's uh, resources. Also monitoring our performance. So the local road safety plan is an example of looking at crash histories and examining crash histories at locations around the city. And uh, our, our $2.2 million of HSIP funding that we received will directly impact and improve uh, active transportation safety for pedestrians and cyclists at, at various locations throughout, throughout the community. So currently, our network uh, comprises about 115 total miles of these various types of, of bikeway facilities, these various classes. Uh, we uh, uh, inventoried all roadways in Palm Desert as part of, of a walk and roll so that we could determine where gaps exist between the general plan, uh, uh, which is our vision for the future uh, and today. So we can map out a strategy for bridging those gaps over time. I want to uh, remind us where we have, have been in recent years. I've mentioned these, San Pablo phases one and two, uh, a $20, $20 million investment uh, that largely improves uh, biking and walking and uh, active transportation infrastructure um, from Magnesia Falls Drive down to Highway 111, CV Link, 100% reimbursed project by CVAG, uh, the city was responsible for building CV Link in Palm Desert uh, to a tune of about $6.2 million. I've mentioned the next two projects. I would like to highlight again, the Slurry Seal program where the city conducts uh, uh, annual maintenance of our, of our pavement. Uh, we leverage that uh, annually to improve and upgrade our um, a bikeway infrastructure. So, so over the last uh, three years, uh, we have invested uh, over $26 million uh, to um, increase uh, our and upgrade our bikeway network and bikeway infrastructure by nearly 14 miles. Uh, and also either rebuild or really build new sidewalk to the tune of 2.5 miles over the last three years. Projects we're working on right now, uh, a Haystack Road traffic calming phase one, uh, we expect that uh, we'll be in construction this summer uh, to uh, introduce uh, all-way stops at three intersections on uh, Haystack Road, that's phase one. We'll also be designing during this time uh, the improvements to phase two, and that's an, an upcoming slide. Uh, the intersection of Haystack and Highway 74, uh, there's an intersection modification that we will be building this summer. It'll add crosswalks and bike lane detection to the, to the intersection, and it's being designed to uh, dovetail with uh, the Haystack Road Traffic Calming Phase Two project. And also uh, Monterey Avenue and Fred Waring Drive, uh, uh, council asked us last year to look at adding a right turn lane. And as a part of that, uh, we're leveraging a, that project to improve pedestrian accommodation and pedestrian safety in the Northeast corner of that intersection where there is a continuous right turn lane uh, we're going to add uh, additional measures to improve pedestrian safety at that location. And while this is not a city project, it definitely impacts the city, and the city is a partner on this project, CVAG CV Sync project, which is intends to improve signal synchronization throughout the valley. Uh, and in Palm Desert, our phase one includes uh, Highway 111 and Washington Street. As a part of that program, the signal timing uh, will be updated and, and reprogrammed uh, to accommodate current standards for bicycles and, and pedestrians and detection for bicycles. The 2022 Slurry Seal program, which is currently underway, uh, will update uh, nearly nine miles of, of class two bike lane markings. And soon up our Cook Street resurfacing project, 
uh, that will update uh, two and a quarter miles of uh, class two bike lane markings from Merle uh, Avenue to uh, Frank Sinatra. And then PD Link, uh, we will be uh, putting out to bids uh, this spring, uh, the uh, first phase of installation of class three bikeways, that's the shared road bikeways uh, to a tune of, of nearly nine miles of bikeway, uh, class three bikeways to be implemented with the first construction project uh, under PD Link. Uh, looking ahead to next fiscal year proposed in the five-year CIP is the first implementation from a study that we began last year, looking at uh, the uh, traffic operations and capacity at intersections, uh, first for, for motorists so that we, we do a better job of queuing and uh, timing signals for motorists. But also while we're there, we will be updating signage and markings uh, at roundabouts and uh, unsignalized intersections, as well as improving signal timing uh, for pedestrians and bicycles at, uh, at traffic signals. Uh, that's the first of, of several phases of traffic operations and capacity improvements that we're proposing in, in the budget. Also in the budget is uh, the expenditure of construction for the roadway safety improvements. Uh, on, on today's city council agenda, uh, you have the second of two um, design contracts uh, that will uh, uh, design the improvements uh, that are covered under the $2.2 million in Highway Safety Improvement Program funding. Uh, PD Link, uh, we look at the next phase of PD Link uh, next fiscal year, adding another nearly seven miles of new and upgraded bikeways. And then the last segment of, of CV link that the city is responsible for building. Uh, we call it the CV link Hobley connector. Uh, and that's along uh, the east side of the CVWD property from the Whitewater Channel up to Hobley Lane East. It's about almost a mile uh, and it's going to be a class one bikeway. So that separated path, uh, the city will, will be constructing that for CVAG and being reimbursed by CVAG uh, for that improvement. I mentioned earlier that we're presently designing phase two. Can I ask a question about that? I'm, I'm gonna lose track of all the questions I have. So is it okay if I interrupt you on- Absolutely, please do. Just Sam. on, the, on the, the PD link, will you describe where that is um, at some point? Is there a map coming up of where these projects are? Yes, we have some mapping. Okay, and then on what you just talked about, the CV link Hovley connector, I know we were expecting to connect via the wash, um, but there was some possibility that we would get a bridge. Can you update us on the status of that issue? Uh, CVAG is responsible for building uh, uh, the CV link that parallels the wash. That's more or less on the uh, south bank of the wash. Uh, they are constructing um, a low water crossing. It's not a bridge. They are constructing that across the channel from the south side to the north side. And our Hovely Connector project will connect uh, to that at grade crossing. Okay, thank you. Uh, finishing off this, this slide, uh, the first phase of walk and roll PD, that gap filling effort, uh, we expect to add and update about five miles of bikes and sidewalks uh, in, with next year's budget for a total funding proposed for next year of, of nearly $10 million. And that, that 10 million also includes uh, implementation of the first fruits from the neighborhood traffic management plan uh, and our uh, uh, curb and, and uh, sidewalk replacement, curb ramp, sidewalk replacement programs, as well as a safe routes to schools program. We had applied for grant funding for this from the state, uh, but our application was, was not accepted, unfortunately. Uh, but we did propose 100% funding uh, in the budget uh, in the event that city council wishes us to proceed. So wrapping up the, the look ahead, our five-year capital improvement program, uh, every year in the five-year CIP, we are proposing substantial resources for advancing active transportation throughout the community, uh, dealing with safety issues that we have identified through our planning efforts, uh, we are um, looking at uh, continuing to 
expand our bikeway and sidewalk through through PD Link, uh, and uh, and continue that through the next five years, uh, for a total of we're proposing twenty six million dollars. Uh, that would translate to about thirty four miles of new or upgraded bikeways and new sidewalk, as well as addressing safety and capacity issues, operational issues that improve the experience for bikers, walkers, and motorists alike uh, at about 100 intersections throughout the, throughout the community. And as part of that also is continued uh, uh, asset ma maintenance and continued study of, of uh, where do we go uh, next. So the, the mapping uh, that we have to, uh, to show uh, our expanded network uh, color-coded by uh, the different classification of, of bikeways shown on this map. Recapping the previous slides, uh, we're looking at adding nearly 34 miles of, of uh, new and upgraded bikeways and sidewalks, addressing intersection issues. Um, that would lead us to a total of, of almost 150 miles of uh, uh, active transportation facilities uh, throughout, the, throughout the community uh, with an investment over the next five years of just a little over uh, $26 million. Um, the, the streets portion of the capital improvement budget uh, over the next five years is proposed to be $64 million. Uh, the value of ATP, uh, the $26 million investment is about 41% of the streets uh, proposed streets budget over the next five years. Uh, certainly money makes the world go around uh, and measure A and gas tax are primary sources for streets funding. Uh, they comprise 82% of the funding in our streets budget between those two funding sources. The city has leveraged new construction tax. That's a, a developer uh, fee that is paid uh, for regional facilities. Uh, that comprises about 6% of our proposed expenditures over the next five years. And then uh, of various other sources add another, add another about 12% to the pot. But really, uh, ATP is, is primarily, if not entirely funded through Measure A gas tax or new construction tax, uh, augmented by uh, outside funding that we, we may receive through, through grant applications, such as highway safety improvement programs uh, and, and SB 821 or any other sources that may emerge from all of the, the work that uh, came uh, out of uh, Washington DC and producing more money uh, for states. Uh, policy change, I've, I've already mentioned uh, CVAG adopted ATP design guidelines. Uh, various communities uh, contributed to the review uh, of uh, these ATP design guidelines. They're, very good, uh, uh, use uh, current methodologies for uh, active transportation elements of, of our infrastructure. And the uh, staff will be recommending to city council in May uh, at the May 12th meeting uh, that we pursue adopting the, the design guidelines so we can um, provide those to developers and, and use those on our capital improvement projects. Uh, back in 2019, in the before times, uh, the city uh, uh, updated our bikeway signage and, and pavement marking standards. The green uh, markings you see in the bike lanes today are a direct result of that update to the standards uh, now three years ago. Uh, I've mentioned the state law changes, any other state law changes that impact active transportation or how we regulate, monitor, enforce, administer roadways. We're keeping uh, our finger on the on the pulse of, of what's happening from a policy standpoint. And uh, even uh, uh, the, the state uh, with its uh, requirement for communities to examine vehicle miles traveled uh, for new developments uh, or redevelopments, um, we, uh, uh, those guidelines can uh, certainly reflect the, the use and the reliance on active transportation. Uh, and those guidelines uh, are very detailed, very engineerish. Uh, and Riverside County uh, adopted uh, detailed guidelines. We've been using those ad on an ad hoc basis, and we're going to be asking council also in May uh, for direction on adopting these, these guidelines uh, and put that in our code. And then, of course, just recently, uh, City Council approved the Unite Palm Desert Bicycle Incentive Program. Certainly, that's a touch point between what the city is building along its roadways 
and what the, the business community uh, it may be interested in, in uh, taking advantage of uh, uh, that, uh, that those two uh, programs um, uh, can align with each other. Well, we, we, we provide uh, the infrastructure to ride on and then when they achieve, uh, uh, reach their destination, uh, folks have a place to park on private property. Uh, that's not to say that the city won't also continue uh, constructing, installing bicycle parking as a part of our PD link, lock and roll, PD, and other, and other projects. So I thought it'd be good to close off a lot of verbiage with uh, some, some good examples of, of the work that uh, this city has done over the last uh, recent years uh, uh, to improve active transportation in the community. Uh, an example is uh, raised mid-block crosswalks uh, on El Paseo that were done as, as part of the, the demonstration project. Um, that's one example. We've uh, followed this example on San Pablo phase two now. Uh, the incorporation of active transportation into roundabouts. Uh, this is San Gorgonio and uh, San Pablo Avenue before and after. And then here's a nice long shot of San Pablo phase two before and after. And notice those green bike lane markings. Uh, we're gonna be seeing a lot more green uh, pavement uh, throughout our community through the various programs that the city council is supporting. Uh, and yes, a bump and grind uh, trailhead uh, before and after shots. Uh, in, uh, in the proposed capital improvement budget, we're proposing uh, funding uh, a, uh, a bathroom addition uh, at the uh, at the bump and grind trailhead, and also uh, the extension of bicycle facilities from the trailhead further east as a part of PD Link to cross uh, the Palm Valley Channel and extend over to El Paseo. Another shot of CV Link on Painter's Path, and here's a shot of uh, PD Link on Magnesia Falls Drive. Uh, just west of uh, San Pablo Avenue. And here's CV Link uh, east of uh, Rutledge, uh, looking to the west and showing uh, how, the, how, the, how the link lines up with uh, the, the current roadway. And then these are some examples of, of uh, our citywide uh, bike golf cart lane improvement. This was funded uh, in part by RCTC's SB 821 grant program. So before and after uh, retrofitting uh, uh, bike lane uh, markings and signs that meet contemporary standards. So we're accommodating bicyclists, say uh, along uh, the length of right turn lanes, which is major conflict point. Um, any, anybody here who rides a bicycle knows that right turns are a are, are major, major problem uh, for bicyclists. And even, even uh, elements such as improved signage uh, directly impact and improve uh, safety uh, for all roadway users, including our most vulnerable, school children, walkers, wheelchair users, visually impaired folks, and, and our bicycle and golf cart users. Um, these are examples of signs that uh, have LED uh, flashing lights uh, along the edges of the signs and they highlight the presence of stop, yield. Uh, and uh, we are installing these at more locations throughout the, throughout the community. And then the upcoming uh, HSIP funded uh, projects uh, will include upgrading more of our uh, pedestrian uh, signals from the traditional, the old, I mean, walk, don't walk, to the countdown uh, timers. Uh, I think that does a great job of informing anybody that's approaching or at an intersection of how much time they have to cross it and, and to wait uh, for uh, the folks to cross the, the crosswalks. And then on the right-hand side, uh, these are the uh, new traffic signal uh, retro reflective backplates that help highlight the presence of traffic signals uh, we, it, is, it is a known, uh, it's a quantified issue that sometimes we lose the sight of traffic signal lights in the background when there's sun behind or when there's a lot of other lights from, from businesses off on the side of the road. 
this, this simple re reflective tape uh, around the, the border of a traffic signal actually helps reduce those rear end collisions. Uh, folks that run red lights, uh, whether it's e at nighttime, which is most obvious, but also even during the daytime. Uh, and that was a, a, part, a part of the $2.2 million grant that we've received from the state. So the, count, the message of the countdown is don't walk, run. <laughs> I don't know if that's on the module, but we can look into that council member. Randy, while we've got a quick pause, what percentage did you say that there was a reduction in the uh, rear end collisions? Uh, I don't have that in front of me, but I, I can certainly follow up with, with the council on that. Thank you, much appreciated. Sure thing. The, as a part of applying for highway safety improvement program monies, uh, we're required to do a benefit cost ratio. And uh, that expects certain um, standard reductions in, in accidents and crashes. Uh, and that's, that's, that's a formula, formula that's, that's, what do you want to say, provided to us uh, by the state and, and federal governments. And we can certainly share that with you. And I think we even touched on that in our local road safety plan document that council adopted, uh, or excuse me, accepted uh, last June. Uh, we, we covered a lot of that and talked a lot about, like we have uh, a lot of uh, uh, collisions are um, uh, involve uh, elderly uh, uh, roadway users, drivers. Uh, and that was one of the recommendations in the LRSP to how can we help increase awareness uh, of, uh, of uh, rules of the road uh, to our, our elderly citizens as well. A uh, look ahead. Uh, this is uh, on the left. This is a slide taken directly out of our, our last presentation to Council on the Haystack Road traffic calming project. Uh, and this is a rendering of a possible uh, uh, median uh, for the class four that Council directed staff to implement along the north side of Haystack Road. I don't know if it's going to have vegetation in it, but we're certainly lurking, looking at uh, vertical elements, uh, learning a lot from uh, the CV Link project. Uh, we have an artist uh, that's a part of the design team. We've had some preliminary discussions with the design team about how can we have vertical elements that not only help provide a, a safety kind of a function, warning motorist users that uh, stay away from this medium, but also how can it be aesthetically pleasing in the community? And we're going to be very excited to bring uh, ideas to city council, uh, as well as our, our arts commission, uh, when we have uh, something developed here on the, on the project. On the right hand side, uh, council member Jonathan is uh, uh, our, our great map that shows uh, a PD link. Uh, what it doesn't show is uh, some dash lines I had on a, the broader map, where we are looking at many other connections between what it was the core of PD link down to Haystack Road. Maybe if you don't mind, I'll, I'll flip back to that real quick and just highlight that. Uh, a, a lot of a lot more north-south connections from say Shadow Mountain down to Haystack. I'll just back that up just briefly. <clears throat> you can see in the in the the, the pop out uh, on the screen how we're proposing additional uh, Class Three uh, facilities in dashed green, including Grapevine. Uh, and then extending uh, those further down to Haystack Road. And we don't have a lot of direct vehicle connections to, to Haystack Road from the, from the north. Uh, so uh, we're, we're following existing public right-of-way in, in a lot of these proposed routes. Uh, I think they're, they're doable. Um, and certainly it's uh, you know, a combination of signage and markings. Yeah, while you're on that slide, if I may, um, so there, we have a lot of gaps in the city. Um, an example would be Hovley, um, friendly to bikes between Monterey and Portola, unfriendly to bikes between Portola and Washington. Uh, similar situations on Monterey, on Portola, on Cook Street, you know, going north-south. So, you know, that makes it difficult because cyclists and walkers really, but particularly cyclists, really kind of have to figure out, for example, if they want to traverse our city all the way from the west to east, how to do it. 
And I, I couldn't discern from these maps whether that's in the pipeline or not. Can you address that for us? Sure, sure thing, council member. I don't know, can you see my cursor on the screen? Yeah. Oh, great, that, that'll help. So my laser pointer here, <laughs> um, uh, here's Hovely Lane East from Portola uh, to, uh, to Cook Street. Uh, we've dashed that in. We've identified it as, as one of the, actually one of the more substantial gaps in the, in the bicycle network. We've identified that as a, a possible bike lane. Uh, that's, that was identified through the walk and roll PD project. And we'll be, we'll be looking at uh, uh, alternatives. How can we add bike accommodation on this section of the roadway, as well as uh, any improvements to bicycle accommodation on the existing uh, bike lanes on Hovely Lane East uh, as a part of walk and roll. We will be doing a follow-up uh, request for direction, confirmation of alternatives uh, with city council at a later date, much like we did for PD Link, where we dialed back to you and said, this is our ideas, these are our recommendations, what do you think? Uh, we'll be doing the same. Okay, and then similar situations on parts of, uh, I think Monterey, Portola, Cook Street, Northwest. A suggestion for you and your team to consider is the possibility of interim measures. For example, sharrows, which are not ideal, but are better than nothing. Um, you know, that may, may at least be some improvement over what we have now until we get a more effective, um, translate expensive solution to some of these challenges. Randy, how close are you to the completion of your presentation? Uh, just, just minutes away. Okay, so why don't we allow him to finish his presentation and then let's go back for questions. I would, I would like to take uh, uh, Council Member Jonathan's uh, suggestion. We, uh, uh, we're, we're in alignment with that suggestion. Uh, there may be some more difficult improvements that might require CEQA uh, analysis, might require property acquisition, uh, and an example is Painter's Path uh, from the bump and grind to where it uh, dead ends at, at the Palm Valley Channel. Uh, this, the, the city uh, has an opportunity to extend a class four, which is that CV, -like, CV link like facility, uh, but we would need to bump the curb out to the south to really accommodate that. Otherwise the roadway is, is too narrow for, for say the tractor trailers that, that need to use the uh, painter's path for the backside of Target, et cetera. Uh, so that is a longer lead time to implement um, the class four. We have uh, an interim improvement of, can we just do sharrows uh, from the bump and grind east uh, to get us to the existing bridge while we work on a, a bigger improvement? That is one of the, the alternatives uh, that we're looking at for, for painter's path. So we, we increase accommodation in short order uh, for low cost, uh, but it, it puts that stake in the ground while we work on something more substantive and, and long range. Let's dial forward past the photos. Uh, I just wanted to, to, to close uh, by, by thanking city council uh, for, for requesting this, this update on active transportation. I've given you a, a teaser or a glimpse of, of the, the five-year capital improvement program as staff has assembled it and drafted it for council review. Uh, we can certainly talk more. There'll be lots of tables of numbers uh, coming up in, in your, 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 your budget briefings. I'm happy to um, uh, answer any, any more questions council may have today. Okay, hey, thank you so much. And before you, you know, please raise your hand so we, everybody gets a chance to have their questions answered. And I wanna thank everybody for their patience while we, I dealt with my little technology gaffe. I don't have a, a question, Madam Mayor, but if I can offer again my same, the gratitude to staff for such a detailed presentation. I loved being able to see where things were spaced out and the larger span and appreciate Council Member Mayor Pro Tem's Jonathan's observations. I had the same concerns about those areas as I drive around that in some places, not only is there not a determined bike lane, but it's also areas that are not very well lit. So the combination of those factors like on Cook 
both. You have elevated speed, people that just got off the freeway, and we need to consider all of the locations and, and drivers. And as we discuss safety, um, there's actually a right of silence that's going on here in the city, May 18th, and it will be a, a loop in Palm Desert. So, you know, we can, I'm sure, find out more info on that. But it's very critical that we look at all of these ways and, and support uh, diverse traffic. Um, and then one other comment was in seeing different opportunities, I think that having the type four does allow for cyclists that are on a different speed for their own um, velocity needs, have the ability to go around walkers that are maybe plugged into their noise counseling, counseling devices. And so that allows everybody to share the road a little more. So those are my four cents. Anybody else have any comments or questions? Okay, allow, I, me, allow me to outguess maybe a question, a follow-up question by council. We will make these slides available to you. Uh, the, the, the maps are, are cover the whole city. Sometimes it's hard to see the, the details. We'll make this available to you uh, so you can, you can view this uh, in a more leisurely setting uh, and, uh, and, and, and provide further, further feedback. Thank you, Randy. Savvy? Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, I just want to make sure everybody had an opportunity to ask their questions and give their comments. So just to add a little bit of emphasis, and I, I couldn't agree more with Councilmember um, Quintanilla's comments, but part of the drive towards interim temporary solutions is because cyclists are navigating their own solutions and they're not always safe. So for example, when you talked about PD Link East from um, the bump and grind, they're already doing that. And they're, they're riding on Portola and they're riding on Monterey along with traffic uh, and on Hovley. So the sooner we can make it at least marginally safer, I think the better. And that's part of the, the drive um, towards moving forward with something, even though it's not entirely what we want. The other thing that I would suggest um, to staff is this is amazingly wonderful news. What I'm hearing is that our city is about to invest $26 million over the next five years to, to, um, to do a wonderful thing, right? To help the environment by reducing dependency on cars and by enhancing pedestrian and cycling safety. Um, and I, I think that should be a press release. I, I'd like to see the Desert Sun uh, have a wonderful article about this because uh, our residents and the rest of the Valley should know what we're doing. And maybe, you know, maybe it'll encourage others to do the same. And, and to focus their resources on similar goals. So staff, if you if you concur and if we can get something out there, it's some good news and why not share it? Great job, thank you. Are there any other comments or questions? Yeah, I have a couple comments if I may. Uh, first of all, thank you for all the details in the pictures. The pictures make everything so much easier for all of us to understand. Um, I do have a quick question, and that is, what was the impetus for the stop sign, the LED stop sign on El Paseo? Well, how, why did you choose that one? Ah, we... Um, and we are those them. solar? Uh, uh, yes, they're solar powered. And uh, the, we put them in because we, we saw that we have a lot of, uh, too much non-compliance to the stop signs. In other words, people running the stop signs. And, mm -hmm. and the LEDs just help highlight their presence. Yeah, it sure stands out. I mean, it's... Part, it's, it's the progress of us designing a city for people and not just for cars. So it's good to see that going on. And it, it makes me very happy to hear all the grants that you're getting, that's good news. At SCAG, we, we are uh, lobbying to get a billion dollars in ATP funds this year. The governor has said 500 million and it really just is not enough. So we're hoping for the state we get a billion. And I wanted to give a little big background on the CBAC guidelines. We've been dealing with so many of our cities are putting in bicycle lanes and really working on their active transportation. And we, it, <laughs> the light bulb went on. If we do it differently from city to city, we're just going to create confusion. So we realized we had to work together to find some coordinated efforts in the, that are aligned from city to city to keep people safe and keep uh, ATP efficient. Are there any other questions or comments? 
One last comment on, on the LED stop signs. I greatly appreciate uh, the one that's right by the elementary school on the Magnesia Falls side. That was an area that you've got school and residential and people that aren't always looking. So that's a, a great safety improvement in an area that's not very well lit. So deepest, deepest gratitude. And that'll make a big in, impact for the students that are there of all three schools in the vicinity. Okay, are there any other comments? Okay, well, I think then we have, uh, what, nine minutes before we go uh, start our next meeting. So take advantage and we'll see you back here. Great job, Randy, thank you. Great job to the team. They, a lot of work went on behind the scenes to, to make this happen. Yeah, appreciate it.